Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Say a quick prayer. Bow your heads, Lord. Please bless us, protect us, and keep us safe, Lord. Help me to deliver your message, Lord, today. Help me, Lord, to be precise and concise in your word. Please bless everyone here, everyone that's about to come, and everyone that has not come today. Bless us, protect us, keep us safe always, families and friends. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we have a small group today, um, some people away, some people um, doing other things today, but uh, if you don't know anybody or didn't greet anybody, please take this time to show your aloha and greet, meet and greet at this time. <laughs> I'm John Dwight. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, just to give a little feedback. Um, about Oasis Christian Church. We we started off a year and four or five months ago, is that right? We started a home church. The reason why we started a, a church that gravitated uh, here on the second floor of the Elks Lodge and we're, we're so blessed and grateful uh, to, to Mabel and the Elks as well. I am a member, member um, and on the board, so that helps. But we started Oasis Christian Church with the idea that all the, all churches were closed except for you counted on one hand. Central Christian was open, and I believe that was the only one that was open at the time. Uh, received the Lord's calling, and we were going at the time to New Hope in White uh, up there by White Hill, we were close to it, and they were closed, and they just opened. But as God always does, He nurtures and progresses us. And we decided to have our home church. And we were in there for at our home every Saturday. We did it in the afternoon. Frank can attest to that. We did it in the evening. I think approximately at five o'clock, I believe. And then we were fortunate enough enough to have downstairs. And then um, we were at. 5 o'clock then, and then we gravitated to uh, a 1030 a.m. service, and we are here now. Our church is approximately under 15, 12, fully strength. Um, it's God's timing, it's God's will as the church builds. Um, basically, uh, the messages that I, and the sermon that I like to deliver has a lot to do with where we're at in our present time. Uh, last Saturday, I concluded a three-part series on forgiveness. And we moved on to what we're going to do is a three-part series, first part, this morning, on the obedience and the faithfulness to God. And so if you do have your Bibles or any uh, electronic devices that you might have, the first thing I'd like to do is talk about Noah. In the story of Noah in Genesis 6, and I'd like to go ahead and share with you some of the scripture in Genesis 6, the story of Noah. And I'll read the first verse. Not if you're all there. When men began to increase in number on the earth, 
and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. Angels. And also afterward, when the sons of God, in reference to angels, went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. I'll stop right there on verse 5. And I wanted to preface how great man's wickedness on earth had become. And if you look down, thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. I don't know about you, but that really shakes me. That means every thought, every movement at that particular time was evil all the time. The Lord was grieved. The Lord was grieved. That He had made man on the earth. Now that shakes me as well. Our God, Creator of the universe, Grieved, and he regretted making man. And his heart was filled with pain. That in itself is a moving statement. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air for I am grieved that I have made them but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord this is the account of Noah Noah was a righteous man blameless among the people of his time and he walked with God Noah had three, three sons Shin, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 long, 79, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to restore all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you. And you will enter the ark, you and your sons, and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded. Now let me just quickly preface that. As you can possibly tell, 
We're talking about an ark in, in its magnitude. Not only that, the labor that it took for Noah and his entire family. He had three sons. Three sons were married. He had a wife. That's eight people. Building this ark. Not only that, not only that God commanded him on the animals that he was supposed to store in this ark. Can you imagine the labor? I mean, I don't know about you, but in this day and age, eight men to just build a little shack took a while, or a house for that matter. This is an ark. It took literally 120 years to build this. Now, could Noah have just said, well, you know, God, that's a little bit too much for me to handle. No, I don't think so. No, he was righteous. He was obedient. That's the key. He was obedient. And it took Noah literally 120 years to build this ark. In the time that Noah was building this ark, in that 120 year span, Obviously, it says that the world was evil, full of wickedness. God regretted building a making man. People were marrying, drinking wine, having parties, celebrating, something like what we do now. Are those things wrong? No, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. But. In the 120 years that Noah was building his ark, he was also preaching. He was also saying to the people at that time, repent of your ways. Come into the ark. The Lord is going to deal with sin and He's going to flood the earth. He actually was a billboard. You know those billboards? Did anybody travel in the mainland when you, when you drive down the, the interstate, you see all those billboards? Maybe you see McDonald's or you see Hardee's or you see uh, Sonics or you see the gas stations or two miles where you can fill up. Those big, big, gigantic billboards. I see them. Anybody see them? They're billboards, right? You can't miss it, right? Even if you're driving, right? You can see it. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey, I, gotta, I better stop for gas. Well, oh, I'm hungry. Hey, honey, you want to stop and get a bite? You know, those billboards are, are there to, to get you to stop if you're in need, correct? Or maybe not. But you see them. So Noah was a billboard. He was a billboard. He was telling people at that time. And, and, and let me just preface this. It's like how it is today. When Noah was saying to the people, hey, listen, the world's going to be flooded. Here's the ark. You guys can get in it. No problem. But no, people were like, you're crazy, old man. This place hasn't even, haven't even rained once. We're, we're living in the outskirts of a desert. It, it doesn't rain here. You're out of your mind. And they've seen him building, actively building. Some thought he was crazy. Unbelievers thought, oh, that guy. And others that had that inside sediment saying, you know what? He's always preaching about God. He's faithful. He's doing this for years. You know, there's something going on with, with Noah. It seems like he's a righteous man, but you know what? I, I just, I got a lot of things to do. You know, I, I'm still young maybe, and you know, I still want to, I still have my whole life ahead of me, and you know, I want to do some things with my life, and and, and, and others would say, possibly in, in, in those days, like, you know what, no, I think you're doing a great thing, but you know what, when it starts drizzling, I'm there. I mean, how many people think that, oh, okay, when the Lord comes, I'll be ready to go. But until He comes, I'm just going to just do what I do best and just continue my life in the world. I mean, I, I just can't imagine 
someone saying, wow, look at this guy. He's, he's out of his mind. He's building an ark and he's preaching that the world is going to be flooded and oh no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not with that program. Noah preaches on the judgment and how to survive. The ark was the means of survival. Sin eventually has to be judged. Sin can go on like it is right now. But sin will be judged. It was judged in Noah's time and it was judged in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, every time I give this message on Noah and I'm really making and broadening the part about how this man who was up in age by the way was obedient and faithful to God in that particular time he was the only true righteous man and like I said he could have just said no I'm not going to do it he still had free will at that time but because he was righteous and obedient to God no one is an example of it now let me just dabble in some statistics that I that I've done before and I want to let you know the gravity of where we're at today and how we are just a little bit of what's going on with our society today. There are several pastors that I've been entwined with and they also say that we are living in the times that is more wicked and more evil than back in Sodom and Gomorrah and if you want to go back, back, even in, in Noah's case, okay? Now, that's a statement. That's a statement. Well, just by looking at the statistics on what we have, and if I bear with me on, on my notes. As of last year, Worldwide abortions were 34 billion. Four, 40 to 50 million abortions from Planned Parenthood, literally in one year. There are 600 clinics in the U.S. and 12 countries. Approximately 125,000 plus 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 abortions are being executed per day. 22% of all pregnancies in the U.S. are rendered in abortion. We also have tri-semester tri abortions. That means babies are almost full term. Babies that can feel. Babies that are just in the stomach, but literally, if they were conceived, could breathe and eat as we speak. This is genocide. Period. It's mass killing and it's legal because it's under the umbrella of choice. It's horrible either way and it's sinful. Physician assisted suicide and death is in Medicaid and Medicare. We are allowed in approximately 20 states. California, Hawaii, Oregon, New Jersey, Vermont, Washington, District of Columbia, Colorado, Montana, Maine, etc. And it's growing. 72% Americans favor and support position of suicide. 40 million Americans visit porn sites. No longer taboo. It's a, it, it's, it's, it's a normalcy. It's a joke among millennials. Oh, what did you do? Oh, 
I know Clint's and chill. Well, what did you do? Well, I watched a little porn, had a little beer, went to sleep. It's a normal sin, but it's sin. A site called Pornhub has 20,000 visits a second, 78.1 million a day. There are 33.5 billion sites visited in 2018, 42 billion sites visited in 2019, 5 billion hours watched in porn that is equal to 665 centuries of constant consuming in one year. Can you believe that? I, I, can't even, I can't even fathom. That means in one year, the people that are viewing porn sites is equivalent to 665 centuries. I can't believe it. This is how evil the world is. And I'm comparing it to what happened in Noah's days. I'm comparing. What does it take for the Lord in the second coming to come? You might ask. The abomination and our backs that are turned against the Lord and the spilling of innocent blood. There was a doctor that I researched and he was an abortion. He, he did abortions. He did abortions for 18 years. And then all of a sudden, he had a revelation. He found the Lord. How he found the Lord is because he had a, a daughter himself. Late in his, in his marriage, he had a daughter. And he loved the daughter. But he was loving his own daughter that was alive and raising her. But he would also do abortions. So one day, the Lord touched him. And to make a long story short, he testified at, in, at, in the U.S. Congress in Washington about he was against abortion. He quit his job. He became uh, a, a gynecologist and helped women with their pregnancy. He just went the other direction. He repented and went 180. He said this about abortion. There's a tube that gets in and it's like a vacuum and you flip the switch and the baby in its tri semester is trying to move away because you can see it and as an ultrasound it's trying to move away it's very aware that this thing in the woman is is is, is trying to kill this baby and he's aware of it. you can see the baby actually positioning to move away and then one tissue after another gets pulled out some gets left in there and what a doctor needs to do is go in and pull out an arm, pull out a finger, pull out some brains. So I, I, I apologize today if I'm very, very graphic, but I want to give you the idea, and I'll stop there. I want to give you the idea of how evil we have become. It's a pattern of repetition. It's a pattern of repetition. Why? Because we don't follow God's word. We don't obey His word. We're not faithful. And if we, we're not faithful, then we're ignorant. Because this is the recipe. It's like going over to Richardson's. You know Richardson's? And there's a big sign, a billboard that says, Don't enter water, sharks. Warning, in other words. And people decide, oh, that's just a sign. It won't get me. Goes in, boom, the shark attacks. It's a mess. People don't want to know the truth. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. And if they do know the truth, a lot of us have, they don't want to follow. They don't want to follow. The correlation of what I just described of today and Noah's day is very real. The difference between a lukewarm Christian that professes and the difference between a total unbeliever is yes, night and day. 
But it's worse if you believe and go the other way. It's worse. The faith and obedience of this man, Noah, was absolutely exceptional. The labor that it took again to build this ark and the labor that they had to put these animals that were called by God in the ark and be shut in. Now listen, when the ark was complete, there was an actual plea in Noah. This is it, pretty much, he said. This is it. The flood is going to come, come into the ark. He was pleading with that, the people at that time. Please come into the ark. None came. When Noah entered the ark for the final time, him and his family, God shut them in. The door was shut. And it didn't rain until seven days after. Can you believe the mockery that went on? Ha ha ha, look at him, he's sweating in there. It, it was a desert, it was hot. Look at him, oh, I can't believe it, he's gonna, he's gonna burn in there. They mocked him, seven days before the floods came. And when the floods came, can you imagine no one hearing that outside? Women, children, please let me in, begging, begging. And no one hearing this, and his family hearing this. And he could do nothing because the Lord shut him in. Nothing. You see, God is a, is, is a loving God. He has grace. There's faithfulness to us. But God cannot condone sin because He's a righteous God. He's righteous. He gives us an opportunity to turn from our ways. He gives us an opportunity to be obedient. He gives us that opportunity to change. It's up to us because we are under the umbrella of free will. Free will, which at times I would even ask and tell my wife, Oh my, oh my God, honey, why does God give us free will? You know why He gives us free will? Because He wants us to come to Him on our own. Because God's God. He can force us to be robots. He could say, no, no free will, and everybody's going to follow suit. Line up. He can. He can. He's God. But no, He gives us a chance to be obedient, just like Noah. He gives us a chance to be faithful. The realization of of Noah and his progression with God and his relationship with God is absolutely paramount. Now very, very quickly, I want you to go to Matthew 24, verse 34. And I'm going to start on verse, Matthew 24, verse 34. Not everybody's there. I apologize, Gilbert. I usually have extra Bibles. Okay, thank you. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. 36. No one knows about the day or hour not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only my Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the handmaid, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this, 
If the owner of the house had known at the time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. Stop right there. That right there identifies exactly where we're at today. We don't know the hour, the day or the hour. Christ's coming will be swift and sudden. I want, I want to preface that. There will be no opportunity for last minute repentance. There will be none. There will be no last minute repentance or bargaining. The choice will be made already and it will determine the eternal destiny of each and every one of you that's the thing i want to tell you in the correlation of noah's days and the correlation of what we are today and what we are faced today is exactly what's going to happen once no, once God had shut Noah in, it sealed the faith for Noah and his family, and it sealed the faith for everyone that was outside of that. Unfortunately, people, we have family members to this day, and my heart breaks for them. There's a lot of family members, and my wife and I, we talk about it constantly that are not with the Lord, that don't know of the Lord, that don't want to even put in effort in His Word. And I tell you, it breaks my heart. It does. Because if the Lord came this hour, there's many, many, many people that won't be on that road of the narrow gate. It breaks my heart. You know, I've evolved so much as a Christian, and I'll tell you this, you're looking at a sinner. I did every single sin that there that there is. And my 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 mind was seared. That I could do everything on my own and my own will. I've done many, 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 many ill-advised things in my life. And I just can't believe that. I'm here today preaching God's Word. I cannot believe it. I'm, I'm in absolute awe of it. Because I, I was such a sinner and always had that ideology that, oh, don't worry, if God comes, I'll fall on my knees and, 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 and He'll take me in the paradise. It's good. I'll, I'll be good. Not according to the Bible. I wouldn't even have a split second or a split second of my, how we close it, our, our eyes and open it. I wouldn't. And I'm so grateful that the Lord has established a small church here and that I can study His Word. And I do it every single day. And actually, of all the, of all the things that I've ever done in my entire life, military, college, this is by far, this in Hawaii Brown Banks is by far an amazing journey that I've taken. It has. I hope you follow in and read the best as you can. Wrote, wrote down the notes on Matthew 24. Um, this is the first part of faithfulness and obedience to God, I'm pretty sure you can uh, look at Noah's life and, and look at Noah's time, I should say, on where we're at and how evil it is that we're living day to day. I think what's evil about our day at this particular time is that we as human beings, especially now, we can justify about anything. We can argue, we can justify, we can say what's going on with Black Lives Matter and 
the social injustices that happen are, are, are clear across the world. We can justify abortion, we can justify uh, LBGTQ, transgenders. We can justify a five-year-old going up to his mom and dad and saying that I'm a girl and I don't want to be a man anymore. Uh, we, can, we can make laws under the uh, federal and state government. We can change we can change whatever we want to change. Um, there's some places in this in this state of the union that legalize prostitution. I believe that's Las Vegas. We can do we can do anything. We can legalize marijuana. That's not good for our children. That that's not good for uh, society in general as a gateway drug. And it can, it keeps on getting worse and worse and worse. And when a few pastors that I, I work with say to me, right off the bat, we are worse off today in Noah's day than we are ever before. And in reference to Sodom and Gomorrah, which was literally destroyed by hellfire, uh, excuse me, not hellfire, by brimstone, and we're worse off in that city, those cities, it, it just, I don't know about you, but it just blows my mind that that we are worse off today than we were back in Genesis. And so I challenge you, everyone here, to read on in your Bibles or whatever smartphone devices, like iPhones or Androids that you have to read on to Read on during this week and read on, read on about the righteous uh, life of Noah. And I challenge you as well to live a life of gravitating to righteousness, uh, gravitating to the obedience of God. And um, I'll assign you some homework that we didn't do if you want to write this down. Um, look at uh, Matthew 25. Matthew 25, it starts off with Jesus talking about the parable of the ten bridesmaids. And just an overview about the bridesmaids. Some weren't ready, and some weren't. And the ones that weren't ready, the door was shut. So I want to give you some, some homework to go ahead. Uh, next week, we're going to start off with Matthew 25, verse 1. We're going to read the parable. Now keep in mind, Matthew is, a, is the start of the New Testament. Matthew, you'll find that Jesus spoke, and in the Bible, or in your smart devices, it's referenced in red. And when you reference it in red, that means Jesus was speaking. This is Jesus' words. Matthew is one of the four Gospels. It's very, very divine. It's not like the Romans, the, the, letter, the letter of Paul to the Romans. It's not a letter. That's just as good. But the gospel is where Jesus spoke. The gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's referenced in red. That's how powerful it is. So I want to give you that homework. I also want to uh, close by a prayer. And Teresa, if you can come up and do uh, prayer intentions. I hope um, everybody enjoyed that sermon. But also I want to say, Lord, thank you very much for the opportunity to give your word. It's divine, Lord. It's, it's your message through me, through our church. Uh, please bless everyone here and protect them as they go on to their week, Lord. Please help them to discern and help them live in righteousness, Lord. I love everyone here. And she love everyone here. Help us, Lord, to always watch for you, always be watchful. Help us to pray and help us to turn our family members or our, our friends that are not with you or walking with you. Help us plant the seed, Lord. Help us minister them in, in kindness and, and, and in faithfulness to you and in obedience to you. And thank you very much for completing this part one of your sermon and your ministry. Looking forward, Lord, to 
move on to part two next week Saturday. Please bless our food as well, Lord, as we partake. And please bless, please bless Teresa, my wife, as she comes up here and does uh, prayer intentions. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior. Amen.